your wonderful God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I want to bless all those who may be on their way this morning. I want you to touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our voices this morning, that we can lift you up in praise and adoration this morning. Bless your name, Jesus. These things we ask in no other name, but in the mighty name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is our light. He is our strength. And our life is in him. Hallelujah. We want to give him praise this morning. My life is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise.
H E. Hallelujah. The word of God says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it and they will be safe. Don't you feel safe this morning in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is our strong tower and he gives us the power to take down the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God of peace will crush Satan under our feet. He will guard our feet of the faithful, but the wicked will be cut off in the darkness. Hallelujah. It's not by our might, not by our power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We will crush the enemy. Hallelujah. For the Lord is my tower.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is beautiful. He is beautiful beyond description. He is too marvelous for words. Hallelujah. He is too wonderful for comprehension. Oh, praise God. Let us sing that song this morning. You are beautiful beyond description. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord this morning. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We'll give him some praise this morning. You can do better than that, church. Come on. Give God some praises. Hallelujah. He's been good to you. Hallelujah. He's been good to all of us. We may not see it, but our God is beautiful. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. You are beautiful. Hallelujah. are beautiful beyond description to marvelous forwards you're too wonderful for comprehension it's like nothing ever seen or heard who can bless your Thank you. 
this morning. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallowed be thy name. Jehovah God, you reign. For you will never change, oh God. You are the same God yesterday. The same God today. And the God forever. Hallelujah. Hallowed. Hallowed be thy name.
and he reigns eternally. Hallelujah. 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 There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you.
need a close And then come there with what I need to set my spirit free of love around my soul Come and take me Praise the Lord. Can you do a little bit better than that, Calvary? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Velsina Hunt Spooner. And I want to just mention the fact that she is a part of the Kadash Dance Ministry here in CTCC Barbados. And uh, I'm looking forward to the overflow. I'm looking forward to the overflow. You guys look good from where I'm standing. A little bit more, we would perhaps need an overflow. <laughs> I want to thank all of you who helped to bring us to this place and this service this morning. Sister Pam and uh, the team, thank you so much. Glenn Rose and William, the band, tech department. Would you put your hands together for these minstrels? this Lord's Day morning. While we're on that, let me welcome those of you who joined us on YouTube and Facebook, perhaps during the worship set. So good to have you uh, journey with us here from CTCC Barbados. And those of you in the house, welcome to Calvary Temple Community Church. Uh, if you have not yet checked in, this is a good time to do that. Maybe you can just pull up those of you who are on Facebook, you can pull up the assembly there, Facebookians, you can go on ahead and do that. Some people get a kick out of that and just make a post, let everybody know where you're worshiping this morning, Calvary Temple Community Church. You put that in the search bar on your Facebook app and it will come up and then you know, you know the drill from there and you just check in. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, a couple people that I want to highlight uh, this morning, I'm not sure if Dr. Dr. Carmelita Morris. Dr. Morris is with us. Uh, she's a guest of Elder Dinah Lord. If, yes, there, there she is in the back. Give her a good hand. Good morning. God bless you. So good to have you with us this, this morning. We've got some business to look after. She is a, a young author, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to connecting with her. I believe God has got some plans. Amen. 
It's a divine connection. Praise the Lord. Also, all of the media houses here this morning, always good to have those of you, wherever you're from, CBC, Starcom Networks, um, uh, newspapers, Das Nation, Barbados Today Advocate, etc., Instagram, I don't know. <laughs> all the media houses, welcome. And also, we are thankful today that we could have a, a tidy senior detail representing the Barbados Police Service. I'm going to ask these folks to stand this morning, if you would, from the Barbados Police Service. Turn around and, and let the congregation see your smiling faces. Praise the Lord. You may, you may be seated. Also, it is good to have with us the, our permanent secretary, in uh, Yvette Goddard. If, if you would also stand and be recognized this morning. Together with Assistant Commissioner Louis. Yes. Good to have you, sir. And of course, the man of the moment. <laughs> the Attorney General here in Barbados, Senior Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Dale Marshall, KCMP. Sir, would you do the honors? Let everybody see your smiling face. <laughs> and you're going to hear a little bit more from him uh, momentarily. A couple things that we're going to do just before he will share a few important uh, brief remarks with our audiences, both in-house and uh, online. It's also good to have back with us uh, from a recent trip, our founder, Dr. George Callender, together with Janice Callender and uh, Kristen Callender, the Kristen Callender. Uh, Kristen, where are you? Where is she at? Just go ahead, stand. Where is she at? Yeah, there you go. I say the Kristen calendar uh, because <laughs> she's recently returned, freshly graduated, recently returning from Trinidad. And uh, I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, one of Barbados' newest attorneys. <laughs> So while you're still on your feet, this is the Kairos moment and a good time for me to signal our Attorney General. <laughs> I want his eyes to make four with yours. <laughs> Concerning the fact that uh, this promising, reassuring attorney in Kristen Calendar is heading in your direction, sir, straight for the bar. And I trust you know which bar I'm talking about. <laughs> Give Kristen a good hand. You may be seated, my sister. Amen. <laughs> so we want to pray for these children as they make their way to uh, the downstairs area where they will have their junior church time. We've got several uh, children between the ages of 4 and uh, 10, just before the secondary school age in their preschool years. And we want to pray for them, with them, together with the junior church staff, and believe the Lord for his way in their tender lives. I'm going to ask the children to stand. Go ahead, you may do that now, because you're going to slip out immediately after the prayer. All right? And the staff with Elder Dinah. Father in God, we thank you for each of these precious jewels. These are those whom you have handpicked. And the Bible tells us that these children are an heritage unto the Lord. Further, in the New Testament, we understand that these children help to make up or comprise the kingdom of God. That's why you said, dear Jesus, suffer them to come unto you, for such is the kingdom of God. We ask for your blessing, your manifold blessing, to rest upon them this morning as they will go into their session. We pray, Lord, that what is communicated to them and with them will be so simple the gospel will be made so simple that they will be able to run with it and take it into their homes, into their neighborhoods, into their schools. Dear Jesus, we ask that they would take it into their secondary schools. As that time will come, should you tarry, they will have such wonderful opportunity to even grow up 
under the admonition of the Lord and take that precious gospel, that seed of the word that has been sown into their lives, they will take it into their tertiary education and into the workforce. That is how a country is made prosperous through the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we put you first, we never come last. So we ask for your blessing on them together with the teaching staff and that you will do valiantly with them and for them. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Okay, you're on your way this morning. God bless you all. While they make their way downstairs, I want to welcome our sister with a bit of poetry, uh, Sonia Dawson. I should tell you that today's service has been given the theme of reassuring the reassurer. I, I should mention that, of course, it will come out in the message, the, the brief message that I will share with you immediately after Sonia shares her poetry and before we pray and hear from uh, hear the remarks from our Attorney General. But reassuring the reassurer, because you understand that the police force, their motto is to what? Serve, protect, and reassure. Say that with me. Serve, protect. Say it again. Serve, protect, and reassure. So I thought today, with the compliment of the police force here and in the presence of our attorney general and others, that we could have such a theme as we seek to encourage them and promote their work in the island. Because it's tough these days. It's hard for them. I mean, it's always been hard for police force. But I find that, especially this year, we've had a lot of, uh, and you'll hear more about that, but we've had a lot of gun violence, a lot of crime, a lot of pow pow. You think it's cowboys and Indians. Yeah, minus the bow and arrow. <laughs> So I thought that we could do something so that they would know that we stand with them as a congregation, as a community, and by extension, as a church. Somebody go ahead and say thank you, Jesus, for that. They need to know they have our support because they can't solve crime without us. No? If it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to solve crime. <laughs> So we want to stand with them and, and, and support them. Amen? Amen. Uh, Sonia, would you come? Give this young lady a good hand. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Good morning, church and the online audience. To serve, protect, and reassure. Mighty men of valor, among you, fierce and weak. Royal no more, but the strength of the broken trident shows. In search of a few good men and women, a force to serve, protect, and reassure is more than an image they strive for. Their ceremonial uniform, not to be outshone, a renowned band bearing instruments in hand, how melodic are the sounds. Playing on the hearts of man in any grandstand, the applause can be heard all around. Flooded by emergencies as you go to and fro in a society pro and con. Some say they don't know, yet calls keep flowing as you keep serving, family and friends wandering. The nation keeps praying, rest assured, only God knows. The face of violence, guns spiraling out of control, too deep in darkness, not knowing their worth. The male seed falling by the road, and the threat of families being overshadowed. When downcast within your soul, take up the arm of the spiritual sword to rescue self through the living hope and the breakout of praise to reassure 
lighting your way, lifting others as you go, today and all tomorrow. Thank you, Sonia Dawson. I want to direct your attention this morning for a few brief moments prior to our remarks from our Attorney General to the book of Isaiah. The Old Testament we go. Isaiah, a very, very, very familiar portion of scripture. One verse. One verse from chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. I can hear some of you in the house saying, oh yeah, I know that one, Pastor. <laughs> I know that one well. And it reads thus, Fear thou not. I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. One verse. Father, I ask in God that the word that is already anointed would seep into the hearts of every man, every woman. My God, I pray that the wayfarer who has joined us today will have an encounter with a holy God. I pray that they will understand that you are a God of mercy. You are a God of compassion. You are a God of great grace. You are a God who seeks to uplift the downcast. And you will never slop, stop or slumber. You will never cease. To lift up the hands that hang down. Strengthen the knees that are sometimes feeble. So we ask God that your presence, your abiding presence will be so real today. That every person under the sound of this frail voice will be reassured. I pray that persons will be encouraged in following after Yahweh. Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus, I ask that, whether for those in person or those online, may we put our hands in the hand of the man from Galilee and find rich confidence and comfort in following after the risen Savior. In Jesus' name, I ask that today. Let the church say amen. amen. Reassuring the reassurer. Reassuring those who reassure. Today I want to remind us and reassure us then about some of God's precious promises. Those that he's made to us, to his people, as we serve him. In this verse, God is confronting the heathen for their idolatry. But in the same breath, He's also comforting Israel concerning their relationship with himself. And that's the God of the Bible. The Bible tells us that the word of God is sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Sounds familiar? I can't hear you, church. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Someone once said that it has two edges. It cuts one way and heals the other way. So God is confronting the heathen. You're not going to escape. But in the same breath, if you change sides, ha, ah, there's comfort for the Christian, the child of God. There is comfort for the follower of Jesus. In this verse, God encourages his people. Some may say, I don't have anything to be happy about, Pastor. I don't have anything to be encouraged about. 
Hmm? I have nothing going on in my life that speaks to any type of upliftment. Everything seems to be against me. That's how some people wake up and go to bed with that type of mentality. I want to tell you today, thank God that even when we forget that his mercies are enduring and never ever fail, even when we forget that, God is faithful to remember that. Even when we forget his precious promises to us, God is faithful to remember those promises that he's made to us. And he will never reling on them. An old man who was dying many years ago could not remember God's promises that God had made to him. I'm told that his forgettery was working better than his memory. At that stage of his life, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but if, if you're at that stage, you know what I'm talking about. Just smile at me. <laughs> your forgettery <laughs> works better than your memory. And in that moment, he was reminded that though he could not remember God's promises over his life, God could not forget his promises over his life. That's good news today from Calvary Temple. In this verse, God gives us, his children, some precious promises to reassure us for our earthly sojourn. You may ask, why does God promise us anything? We should be promising him. The truth is, when we got saved, we began to live under the economy of grace. From a human standpoint, we can seldom make sense out of everything that God does. I've never met a man who can figure God out conclusively. If that ever happens, it's a red flag because it suggests that you are God. Okay? There's always a little bit of mystery when it comes to God. That's why the just must live by faith. Verse 8 and 9, let on, he chose us. He, God, chose us. We did not choose him. We might think we did, but God chose us. Therefore, he will do everything to see that we are looked after in our earthly journey. Struck against this, notice these precious promises then that God has given us in our service to him. And this is good for all of us, not only the the police who are present. This is good for all of us. Incidentally, don't you feel safe? <laughs> and I may be honest, when last have you come to church, any church, and sat down and felt so safe? It doesn't matter let, who come, let them come. I don't care what they bring in. What a pack in. Look at the detail. <laughs> And there may be some others on the outside that we don't even know about. You know how these fellows is roll. <laughs> Three main points and I'm out of your way. The promise of his presence, the promise of his person, and the promise of his power. First of all, the promise of God's presence. I want you to see that his presence is powerful. This verse that we're looking at, tells us that his presence, his presence has the power to cast off all fear. 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7 tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So God's presence is powerful. And we have the promise of his presence to drive out fear. I want you to also see that his presence is personal. Matthew 28, 20 tells us, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Which means so let it be. God's presence is not just powerful. It is personal. He is near. He is here. God is with us. Not an angel. He's not sent a delegate. He himself, somebody says, thank God today. He could have sent an ambassador, but he came himself. And today, 
since his resurrection and ascension, by his spirit, he is here. He's in this very room today. And if you're a child of God, he's here. You see that, church? Are you with me today? John 6, 20 tells us, he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. We are talking about the I am that I am. He is here. He's present. And this is very important in any aspect of your life. But especially when the chips are down and your back's against the wall. And you feel as though the bottom of life has dropped out. And you cannot go on any longer. You're about to throw in the towel and call it quits. Life is too hard. The bills are too high. The money is too little. I cannot go on. Anybody like that today? Three of you? Okay, this is a wonderful congregation. <laughs> you feel as though it's hard knocks. And you don't know how you're going to be able to make ends meet from month to month. And every time you turn around, gas gone up again, boss. Light getting ready to go up. That means water can fall above and on and on. You ever notice that in all of the price hikes, all of the price hikes, the only thing that remains constant is your tithe? You ever notice that, Doc? To the Attorney General, you ever notice that, sir? The tithe doesn't move. It's still 10%. Suppose you woke up one Sunday morning and God said, listen, guys, I, I had a board meeting. Uh, th things are really getting, th this is really ridiculous. This inflation is impacting the heaven's economy. Uh, I just thought I'd let you all know that as of tonight, midnight, <laughs> tithe will be 15%. Suppose God did that. Look at somebody next to you and say, thank God. God is not like man. If for no other reason, you understand why I'm a Christian? Tithe has remained constant, boy. Everything else gone to the roof. And God still asks for 10%. That's all, boss. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Somebody's getting a breakthrough. <laughs> We're talking about this God. He is the I am that I am. And his presence is personal. Story is told of a new Chinese Christian. Freshly, freshly born again. Just gave his life to Christ last night. <laughs> a guy named Lo. Chinese fella. Lo. Mr. Lo Chi Chi. <laughs> gave his life to Jesus. He had just received the Lord as personal Savior, personal Savior, and was so excited as every single last one of us who've ever made that step, each and every last one of us can testify to that. We know what that's like, and it's an exciting time. The road ahead, filled with all kinds of ups and downs, but it's still an exciting journey. Whilst reading God's Word, he stumbled on this passage that I shared with you a moment ago, Matthew 28, 20. Reading through the Gospels, stumbled on Matthew 28, 20. And he took it personally. He took it personally. This is what he understood God to have said to him. Lo, just so you know, I'm going to be with you always, even unto the end of the world. He read Matthew 28, 20. It said, lo... So he took it personally. He said, but this is for me. This is for me. It didn't say Andre. It didn't say Harry. I'll be with you. It didn't say Jane. I'm going to be with you. It didn't say Pam. I'm going to be with you. It says, Lo. And this is how you and I, some of you are looking at me as though you, I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. This is how we are supposed to internalize God's word. As if our name is right there. You look at Matthew, Matthew 28, 20. And I, let's read that again. I don't want you to put your name there instead of low. Take out the Chinese fella. <laughs> put your name in there. You ready? I, I don't know if you have it on the screen. You got right. Okay, good. So we're going to read this on three. I'm putting my name in there. You put your name in there. Two, three. Andre, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 
Did, didn't you feel like a weight left off your shoulders? You took it personally. Instead of reading it like if it's some old, dusty, God-forsaken book that has no relevance for today any longer. And that's how too many people read and treat the Bible. Look at somebody and say, it's personal. Take it personally. You're supposed to. I want you to see the presence is perpetual. This presence of God is also perpetual. Hebrews 13, 5. Be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I must tell you quickly before you move on to the second point. In the original Greek, this is so powerful. This is why it's good to go back to the original languages wherever you can. In the Old Testament, it's Hebrew. In the New Testament, it's Greek. Greek and Aramaic. And in the original language here in the Greek, this is what it really meant. So the first hearers understood this. Be content with such things as you have. For God said, I will never, ever, never, ever, never, ever leave thee nor forsake thee. In other words, it is repeated three times. Where you see, I will never leave thee. It is never, ever repeated three times. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever leave thee or forsake thee. Wow, that's powerful. That's personal. That's perpetual. Powerful this is, man. It's important to get back to the original language. And incidentally, wherever you see three things come together as you're reading the Bible, it's a message to you that it speaks of ceaselessness. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. You see that? Why, why not just say holy is the Lord God? I get the point. But when you see holy, 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 never, ever, never, ever, never, ceaselessness. Somebody rejoice in God today. The promise of his person. Secondly, I want you to see we have an association with this God. We have an awareness with this God or of this God. And thirdly, there's an authenticity about this God whom I speak of. We have an association with him. That word thy in the verse or text, thy. This, this is personal. We have established that already. We need to know that this God can do what he said he can do for us. We need to be reminded of his persistent perpetual promises. So that word thy. We have an association with this God of the Bible. Then we have an awareness of him. He is God. He can do anything. Ephesians 3 verse 20. If you're taking notes. Ephesians 3 20. Luke 1 37. Luke 1 37. And Job 42 40. This one I'm going to read for you. Job 42 uh, verse 2. Sorry. Job 42 verse 2. It reads, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh, that's loaded. I know that you can do anything and nobody can stop you. This is Job talking to the creator God. Sometimes I think that we're too quick to forget who it is that we're dealing with. We're too quick to forget who it is that we're serving. Who it is that has saved us and called us to serve. We forget who it is that has called us, who has summoned us to serve to protect and to reassure others. We forget too quickly. We think that it was a man who called us. We think it was a woman. We think it was a good idea. It was God who called you to service. And I don't care. Again, this is not just for the police. This is for all of us. Because I was thinking about it. There's so much that we have in common with the police service as Christians. <laughs> when you look at that motto, to serve, to protect, to reassure, there's so much in common that every child of God has with these police. Because that's our responsibility. Theirs is to the country of Barbados. Ours is a little different, but it's still service, protection, and reassurance. We are called to serve Almighty God. And if you're a Christian and you're not doing that, you're in trouble. 
Because only what's done for Christ will last. Everything else is going to pass away. Everything else is going to pass away. And be worth absolutely diddly squat. Only what's done for Christ will last. So we're called to serve God. Then we're called to protect the next generation. Folk gone quiet. We're called to protect the next generation. And they don't have to be 11 or going into first form. Hello? The next generation, those are coming up on your heel. I don't care what age they are. You're called. I'm called to help protect them. As those who went before us were supposed to help protect us. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, of course, we're called to reassure each other concerning Christ's soon return. Mm. <laughs> so you understand we have an awareness of him then there's an authenticity about him the word dismayed dismayed it tells us there fear not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God I will strengthen thee and that word dismayed it means distraught it means downcast it means distressed to be filled with anxieties. I've got a question for you today that only you can answer. If this God is our God and he is all of that that we say he is and that the Bible says he is, why do we fear? Why do we fear? We don't have to fuss. We don't have to cuss. <laughs> why do we fear or fret? This God said he will protect and he will preserve, he will keep, he will provide. Why do we fear? Because of our natural human instinct. I have another word for that. Our sinful nature. That's why we tend to fear. But God said, I've got you. I've got you. I'm with you. I'm in the midst of this with you. And I'm bringing you out with a strong right hand. So my God is on the throne. Is yours on the throne today? He's in full control. Whether you're in the building or you're online, good news from CTCC Barbados. God is still large and in charge. Give him a hand of praise. He has not changed. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I like to put it this way. He's the same yesterday, Today, to now, and tomorrow. <laughs> to now, God is on the throne. We need to remember who it is that we're dealing with. He's not a monkey man. Yeah, know who you're dealing with. He is a king and king of kings and looks after his subjects. Finally, the promise of his power. God's promise here is threefold. The word yea means surely. Yea means surely. Absolutely no doubt. In the New Testament, Jesus would have put it this way. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. You know what that means? Surely, surely. You can count on this one, baby. Surely. There are three characteristics of his power that we can count on. First of all, he will fortify us. God will fortify us. He will give us the strength, as we said previously, to help us see every duty and every day to its conclusion. Thank God. Because let me tell you, there's some days, especially the last two and a half years, and I didn't know if I would see that particular day to its conclusion or that particular task that I had to its conclusion. But the God whom we serve brought us through the last two and a half years, and has purpose to bring us through whatever comes our way. Are you with me? So he strengthens us to help us see things through to their conclusion. There will be grace and strength for every, every need, every need, Isaiah 40 and verse 13, if you're looking for a suitable reference point, Isaiah 40 verse 13. Secondly, he will fund us. F-U-N-D. He will fund us. Now, I turn up the spotlight here on the police <laughs> who are with us for a moment. But of course, this is for all of us. In a day and an age when other notable police forces all over the world are being defunded, 
It is good to know that God will provide for you all. That's good news from Calvary today. You don't have to go too far. You turn on your, your, your television. Watch a little bit of international news. You don't have to go too far to find out what certain administrations are doing and have given permission to do to defund the police. Something that I'm sure you would never want to happen to you. None of us here would want that to happen to you all. It has to impact you negatively. It is good to know that in the midst of whatever comes your way, God has already gone ahead of you to provide for you, for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren. Are you with me? For the car note that you got to pay at the end of this month and on and on and on. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. God has gone before you. God will give to you what you need when you need it and in the exact proportions that you need it. Philippians 4.19 tells us, All my needs according to his bank account. Huh? God will supply all, not some, all my needs, not my wants. Sometimes we get carried away. God, I want, I want Lamborghini, Lord. I want, I want. How we go? I want your plan. To do what with? To do what with? You can't even look after the Suzuki Swift. What are you going to do with your plan? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I'm not talking about wants now. They're frivolous. God will supply all of your needs. And the Bible says, according to his riches in glory. So I tell you now, put it in our, our, our vernacular, according to his bank account. And I want to remind you that God is not bound to the commerce of this life and this generation. Give him a hand of praise today. He's not bound to the way how we operate down here with dollars and cents. Finally, he will find us. He will fortify us. He will fund us. And he will find us. Oftentimes, we lose our way in life. Many of you listening to this service right now, it's been a long time since you've been in the house of God. You don't know the last time that you've come face to face with the Holy God and you've felt the Spirit of God tugging at your heart, asking you concerning our things. If you die today, where will you spend eternity? How do you propose to wake up tomorrow without my help? It's not the alarm clock that woke you up, but it is my Holy Spirit. And right now, you're looking into the crevices of your heart, and some of you, is, you haven't done that for ages. And I'm thankful that we could have a meeting like this, where you could come into God's house, Put down the glass for a few moments, a couple hours, and let God speak into your heart. Because this is what's going to matter in eternity. We get caught up with a whole lot of other stuff that the moment we die, we breathe our last breath this side of eternity. Nothing else is going to matter. All of that, all of that, regardless of how good it was, will mean nothing. And the thing that will really matter in eternity, we don't, we don't give it much care or attention. Maybe it is that you lost your way. Maybe. I've got good news for you. When we do, I've lost mine. When we do, it's comforting to know that it isn't God who is lost. It is us. <laughs> we often say that we found Jesus, but Jesus was never lost. Not even when he was 12 years of age and his parents couldn't find him. He wasn't lost. He knew what he was doing. And as a matter of fact, when they finally caught it with him, he told them exactly what he was about. I am about my father's business. I'm not lost. You all were lost. <laughs> I'm glad that you found me. When you find Jesus, you are discovered, not him. Are you with me, church? Sinning men and women are lost. They are lost. And they will be lost for all eternity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. But God in Jesus convicts us, as he's doing to some right now. He converts us, as he will do for some momentarily. And he convinces us, as he does every single time we meet like this. And God will get us safely through this journey until we reach his holy heaven. God did not save us to abandon us or abort us along the way. 
Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 tells us, He who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. One of the first verses that I memorized when I got saved. Philippians 1 6. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He who began a good work in you shall complete it. That's good news. He's not brought you this far to abandon you, to drop you, to down with you. That's what we do with each other. But God doesn't do that with you today. Amen? So that's a guarantee from the Spirit of God today. And I want to say to Lucifer, take that devil. Take that devil. Sometimes it feels as though we're not going to make it or God is not hearing my prayers. But I'm happy and I'm reminded today that God is going to complete the work that he started in Andre. Take that devil. <laughs> Boom. As the young people say. <laughs> I close. I thank God for his precious promises that he's unveiled to us today. Don't you? Don't you? The truth is, we don't all live like we believe these things, though. But today is a good day for you to come before the Lord and thank him for his unerring word and innumerable promises that are found therein. Some of us may even want to ask God for forgiveness today because of our lack of faith in him and his promises. For me, I'm super grateful I'm, I'm excited today that we can count on Jesus and these precious promises as we seek to serve him, to protect our next generation, and reassure each other concerning his soon return. Would you stand with me this morning? While well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you're on your feet today. I'm not going to ask you to move from where you are. I'm tempted to, but... I won't do that. But while the band plays something suitable and softly there, uh, and you look into the corners of your heart, every man, every woman, every visitor, every member, I want you to be honest with God. This is not about the pastor now. You, you can fool me. You can fool everybody. You can't do that all the time, but you can do it some of the time. But you never, ever fool God. And you certainly cannot fool yourself. What kind of man are you, sir? What kind of woman are you that you would lie to yourself? Ask yourself today, if Christ called you home, you never saw the sun rise tomorrow morning. You never saw October 17th, 2022. You never, you never saw that. On your tombstone, they will put day dash October 16th 2022 that's what they're going to write that's what's going to be on your tombstone if that's you today I pray not I pray not I pray not but if that happened where would you spend eternity it's a serious question I'm going to ask you momentarily just to raise your hand and take it down. Don't leave it up. Just raise it and take it down quickly. If you say, Pastor, I want to make peace with God. This is not about going to church or attending church or being a member of a church. That has never saved anybody. It may help you from time to time, but that has never saved the fella. But you say to me while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you say, Pastor, I want to come clean with God. I want to make peace with God. If God is real and He is what the Bible says He is, I need to make sure that I've made things right with Him. If that's you, quickly raise your hand and take it down. Don't delay. Yes, two, three. Is there another? Four. Yes, quickly. Five. Take it down. Don't just raise it. Take it down. Scene five. Six hands. Thank you. How many others? Quickly, I'm getting ready to pray. I will not be long. We have another important service. Yes, another aspect of this service that we must move into. Thank you. Nine hands. Is your tenth today? We're into double figures. Is there an eleventh? You say, Pastor, do not exclude me. Remember me. I want to make peace with Almighty God. I, I, I am not, I'm not a church fella. I don't believe in going to church. I'm a busy man and I've got a lot of things to do. But this message that you shared 
that got my attention and I want to make peace with God. Before you go any further, pastor, pray for me. Yes, 11. That's it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. If you've not raised a hand yet, I want you to pray this prayer. The release and salvation comes not in raising your hand, but praying this prayer. So maybe a dozen of you or more, I want you to pray this and mean it, mean it from the depths of your heart. Pray like this. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I put my trust in the God of the Bible. I thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world to die for me, to be buried for me, to rise from the tomb for me. And because he got up, I can get up over whatever challenges I have, whatever circumstances come my way. I am victim today I am reassured of God's comfort his provision and his salvation over my life I have this confidence in the God of the Bible according to the Word of God Jesus died and rose again and I receive him into my heart for the cancellation of my sin debt. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. In Jesus' name, I apply that holy blood to my sin-sick soul. And I claim liberty and salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer just now, and you really, really meant it. You know you needed to pray, and you meant it. Put your hands together for the King of glory today. If that's you, come on. Come on, shake this place for the Holy Ghost praise. You may be seated. I want to encourage, earnestly encourage you all who prayed that prayer just now to follow after the Lord in holiness. You have got to connect yourself with an assembly like this one. It's not the only one, but one like this that is serious about preaching and teaching what the Bible has to say. Serious about giving opportunity for you to serve the Lord with gladness. That's important. Not just coming to church and warming a bench or a chair. That will get you nowhere fast. But about service to the Lord. As these police officers and the entire force serve the country. So we must serve the Lord. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for your patience with me. I, I stood longer than I had intended to, but I don't apologize for that because I'm led by the Holy Spirit in these things. Amen? <laughs> and I must now make room for the brief remarks, uh, or as many and as long as he so desires, <laughs> our Attorney General, Honorable Dale Marshall, I want you to stand with me. I should have left you standing, perhaps. Would you stand with me, congregation? And suitably, I want you to put your hands together and welcome the Honorable Dale Marshall, KSC MP, Attorney General of Barbados. seasoned politician, I finally feel a bit awkward speaking after somebody. That was quite a stirring sermon, and I thank you for it, uh, but I do have to admit that I now have to follow a very tough act. Of course, I've only promised brief remarks, so that will perhaps solve part of the problem. Uh, good morning to the church. Uh, good morning also to my permanent secretary, Yvette Goddard. Good morning to Assistant Commissioner Louis and the members of the Barbados Police Service. Uh, to the congregation here at Groves, let me begin by thanking you very much 
for taking the initiative to have this service for the Barbados Police Service. And I'm delighted, Bishop Simmons, at your choice of theme, reassuring the reassurer. Um, I grew up in the church. <laughs> and um, when I saw your letter, I immediately began to hum, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it is a human trait that we tend to look only at what we want what we need and we hardly give a care to those people those structures that are established to ensure and protect our enjoyment of those things we hardly ever stop to think about the daily sacrifices and the hard and dangerous work that the fine men and women of the police service put in every hour of every single day and you only have a few of them with you, but they are representative of the finest that the service has to offer. And these, <laughs> these fine officers stand daily in the breach between each of you and the criminal element in our country. And they deserve our thanks, they deserve our support and our prayers. My participation in this service, of course, is as Attorney General of Barbados. But I'm here also as a Barbadian who, like you, appreciates the service and commitment that the Barbados Police Service gives to us, gives to our communities, and to our society as a whole. The police, as you know, are the primary agents of law and order and a critical part of the general machinery for any civilized society. And you know only too well that you expect them to be prompt when you call, you expect them to be proactive when you have a dispute with your neighbor, and you expect them to be effective in reducing crime. Their motto, as your bishop has reminded you, is meant to convey to all that they are a dependable, problem-solving institution whose priority is service to the public. But the environment in which the service operates today is vastly different from the environment that they operated in 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And for those of you who were born perhaps in the 70s and earlier, I think you would have a good idea of what I'm talking about. The environment that our officers face today is one where they see a wider range of crime, some of which is more complex and far more dangerous than police officers of two generations ago. They're expected to respond to an increased level of gun crimes in particular, but also property crimes, financial crimes, crimes against the person, and in vogue these days is even cybercrime. Criminals have become more brazen, you see this. They've become more calculating and more savvy. In the case of gun crime, which I know concerns all of you, they're oftentimes as well equipped as the police service. I highlight this not to alarm you, but to underscore why it is so important for the public represented today by this congregation to play its part by assisting the police in every way possible. I've said it before, I can't say enough. If you see something, say something. We know that crime continues to be a major concern for the Barbadian public. And I take no solace in the fact that we are having a similar situation across the region, but it tells us that there's something happening that is not just local. In fact, only last week at a meeting in Jamaica, the Council of Law Enforcement Ministers and Ministers of National Security resolved that it was important for us to host in the region a special meeting to look at violence as a public health issue. The service must be complemented for responding to the many challenges that they face and even with 
reduce manpower. We all know that over the years, the service has been unable to attract the number of recruits that it needs. In fact, I can tell you that early in our last term, I th and I think Assistant Commissioner can confirm this, that we had a, um, a particular cohort at the training school of only 18 officers. 18 of our young men and women, only 18 in that year, were prepared to come forward and to join the service. I think the numbers have now moved up significantly and we're now in our 40s. And if you have been following social media, you would have seen in the last day or so a very, very nice promotion um, inviting people to join the police service. We do need a few good men and women. Um, in fact, 250 to be, to be precise. I hope, Bishop, that you will be able to urge some of your sturdier <laughs> congregants to come forward. So you must complement the service for responding to its challenges with our reduced manpower. And I want to remind you that in the height of the pandemic, you saw the police everywhere. But you would be surprised to know that on many occasions, on many occasions during the height of the pandemic, the number of police officers was significantly diminished because large numbers of them were in either isolation or in quarantine. But you never knew that. You never knew that because they continue to deliver exactly the same service that I hope you've become accustomed to. And if I can, can we applaud the members of the service for their hard work during that difficult time? I have promised brief remarks. Let me say that the importance of a good relationship between the police service and the Barbadian public cannot be understated. Recently, you will have read in our newspaper, you will have heard on social media, a number of biting criticisms of the professionalism of the service. Those criticisms, and if true, the matters complained of are sure to erode the public confidence and the relationship between the Barbados Police Service and the average Barbadian. I want to assure you that as Attorney General, and I believe, I'm sure I speak on behalf of the Police High Command and perhaps on behalf of every single officer, the kinds of things that are complained of, if true, I am after all a lawyer like um, Ms. Christian. Yeah, so you know we have to say, if true, <laughs> that's right. But if true, there are things that simply cannot be tolerated, and I've had a, a, a serious discussion with the commission. I have told him, I've asked him to investigate every single incident, and if true, the individuals complained of are to be read the riot act and punished as severely as the regulations allow. One errant police officer can make the difference between you feeling confident about coming forward and saying, I saw this, I know this. And we want to restore that confidence. The members of the service will make mistakes. But when we make those mistakes, we do not intend to hide them. When we make those mistakes with your help, we are committed to doing whatever has to be done to make sure that they're not repeated. Bishop Andre, let me thank you for entertaining us this morning. Um, you only have a representative number of the force, but I know that they will take back to the members of the service your very, very kind regards and your special thanks. I said we needed a few good men and women, 250 to be precise, and I hope that you and this congregation will help us in that regard. I close. Um, I do not want you to try to be Attorney General, and I will not try to be a preacher. But I remember the story in Luke of the 10 lepers who were healed, and they left rejoicing, and only one turned back to express his gratitude.
I told you I grew up in the church. I want to thank this congregation because in many respects, you represent that one leper who turned back to express the value that you hold, in which you hold the police service. So this event this morning, your effort at reassuring the reassurer, in my view, is equivalent to that leper who turned back. Um, let me I'll be careful. I, I may come back next Sunday if you don't, <laughs> if you don't want it. Bishop Andre, your members, thank you ever so much for having us this morning. Would you give it up for our attorney general once again? And thank you all of you who would have come to be part and parcel of this service, who took time out, carved out time of your busy schedule and your family time and even your church responsibilities to be here in CTCC, Calvary Temple Community Church. I want to invite our founder, as I think it is fitting to do so, Dr. George Callender, if he would come, and I want him to pray for the police. Uh, these who are here, I'm going to ask the police to stand, if you would, and the Attorney General as well, if you would, Permanent Secretary, if you would stand. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Callender, yeah. Um, you would understand that in a very real way, I, I am a student. You appreciate that, right, congregation? So, so we, we chat quite a bit on, on a variety of things. And this particular service was actually his brainchild. Okay? <laughs> and uh, we, once we um, convened and discussed, I felt that, yes, this is something we need to do. And then from there, it was just a matter of connecting with all of the other leaders and making it a reality. Um, Doc, I want you to pray. Uh, congregation, stretch your hands towards these police and uh, the attorney general representing his office. And let's believe the Lord, truly believe God today for these men and women of valor. Shall we bow our heads? We thank you, Lord, for this occasion whereby we can come before thee fall on our knees and raise words of comfort on the behalf of our police service in Barbados. We thank you, Lord, for everyone who would have committed his or her life to this service. We thank you, O God, for touching them and encouraging them in this mighty work. We pray also for the young people in our midst now and even those online. We pray, oh God, that they will see the need for service in such a way as these police are doing. And we pray that they too will join force so it's with the police. We pray, oh God, for our congregation, not just within the church, but throughout this country. We pray, oh God, that we would develop bridges whereby we can work with the police and the police with us. We pray, oh God, that we would even join with the songwriter and say, if your work is my work and my work is your work and our work is God's work we will be a happy happy people we pray oh God that we as a community will strive to work together and we pray Lord as a church and this is serious prayer Lord that we would see ourselves as the prophets of old 
just as God spoke to Daniel and he was able to reveal the dream of the king and interpret it. As he spoke to Joseph and he was able to interpret the dream of the prisoners and even interpret the dream of favor. We pray, oh God, that you will smile on your congregation and give us that ability to interpret what is going on in our society. Lord, we will feel gracious to know that someone at Calvary Temple could call the commission, they could call the sergeant at District C and say, Harry James has just killed someone in St. Lucie. We pray, oh God, you will really reveal yourselves. We want to see a close submit with the police and the community. So we pray you breathe on us and strengthen us and prepare us as a people to go forward in the mighty name of Jesus. So continue to strengthen this force, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. I want to take the opportunity to say goodbye at this time to those who have been journeying with us on YouTube and Facebook or whatever other medium you've been traveling with us, journeying with us on. Uh, thank you so much for connecting with us. Look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. Do remember, next Sunday we have another exciting service right here at Calvary Temple Community Church here at Groves Six Roads in St. Philip. We've got a special speaker in, a guest speaker in from the States, Dr. Paul Carrett, and he's connected or affiliated with Impact Ministries uh, here in Barbados that is also a regional ministry and uh, established, recognized ministry. So uh, from Calvary, congregation, would you put your hands together? As we say adieu, God bless you all. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for connecting with us and tracking us this morning on our YouTube and Facebook channels. It's been a joy of ours here at CTCC Barbados, Calvary Temple Community Church Barbados, to bring this live stream into your heart and into your home. Thank you also for making this channel your go-to channel for good sound doctrine and Christian content. On behalf of the Board of Directors, the Pastorship, the Eldership, the Membership of CTCC Barbados, I want to thank you not only for subscribing and for liking and following, but I want to ask you please to share this content that you received today. It's so important as we see the Lord's return approaching and that day of Christ's coming nigh. It's so important that we share this Christian content to a watching world. Help us then to reach others for the cause of Christ. Thank you, and I look forward to the opportunity, should Christ tarry, to meeting you here on this earth. But if I don't get that chance, I look forward to seeing you up there. Amen? If not down here, up there, as we see the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will see the information coming up on your screen at this time. This is our banking information. Let me take the opportunity to thank those of you who've been journeying with us over the last two years or so. Thank you so much for your gifts. Every last gift, no matter how big, how small, it all matters. And it all goes towards advancing the cause of Christ, the gospel of Jesus, and enhancing the footprint of the Lord Jesus before his soon return. Those of you who haven't been giving yet, I want to thank you in advance for contemplating and taking it to the Lord in prayer. Thank you. Our hearts are full of gratitude. On behalf of all of us then, my name is Pastor Andre Simmons saying, look forward to seeing you next Sunday. CTCC Barbados, Bridgetown. Bye-bye.